Good morning. It is 9.20 a.m. on Saturday, July 11th, 2020. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I've been up for a bit, which I'll explain in a moment. This is five more minutes. So, last night, I started watching Vertigo before bed uh, because it is the next movie on the AFI list that I'm watching for watching 100 movies. Um, we are probably going to be recording the episode for that next week, incidentally. Uh, but, uh, I, I was just so tired that I was realizing that I was starting to fall asleep. And so I decided to break it at, um, there, there's sort of a crucial midpoint of that movie. Um, uh, it's weird to talk about spoiling a 1958 movie, but, um, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't need to get into it, so I won't. Um, but suffice to say that there's a moment in that movie where it very neatly divides the narrative as before that point and after that point. And so I decided to stop it there and watch the rest in the morning. And that's what I did. So when I got up, I decided to watch the rest of the movie before recording this because I kind of felt like that's maybe, you know, vertigo is what I wanted to talk about or at least a little bit. Um, and yeah, suffice it to say, I, I, that's, that's what I did. And Vertigo is such a frustrating movie for me because I don't know, like all of the things, like it, it does a lot of things super well and it has so many really amazing ideas and concepts swirling around in there and they're not, the, the movie is kind of simultaneously heavy handed and too subtle, which I think comes down to just stylistic things in a lot of ways. I think in some cases there might've been like, I, I wonder what that movie would have looked like if Hitchcock had felt like he could really show anything he wanted on screen as opposed to what would the cinema audiences accept in 1958. Right. Um, cause I can't help but feel like there are parts of that movie that would be different if he could have made a, an R rated movie in 2020. Um, and I, and I can't help but wonder while I watch what those differences might've been. Um, now, I mean, the movie's great. Like, the, don't let me, um, damn it with faint praise, I guess. But I'm just reminded in this re rewatching that there's just these pieces of it that I struggle with. And it's one thing to say that, oh, well, the ambiguity is the point, you know, uh, if the, if the very ending were really obvious in terms of what happened, uh, you wouldn't remember it so well. It wouldn't be so interesting. It wouldn't be so mysterious and enigmatic, and it would just be boring and concrete. And I can understand that to some extent, and yet my emotional reaction watching it is frustration that it's not obvious what happened. And while we can say, yes, I am more... I, it, the ending is more memorable by being ambiguous, but I'm frankly not persuaded that being more memorable by virtue of annoying the audience and frustrating the audience means that it's better. I don't know. It's complicated. It's like, the more I kind of think back on it, I, you know, I don't feel as strongly, but I, I, you know, just, just rewatching it. Like I just finished rewatching it. I just, I, you know, I can't help but feel like that ending doesn't do what it's trying to do. And that annoys me. <laughs> and then you, you know that there's a million people out there saying, no, no, that's exactly the point. It's supposed to be mysterious. And then other people say, no, what are you talking about? It's obvious that it's X. And then someone else says, what? No, or what are you talking about? It's obvious that it's Y. And, and then people have stupid conversations and arguments about that. And supposedly that's why it's a good ending. 
Now, the fact that there is a lot of really interesting emotion and everything swirling around all of the characters at that moment, like, that's good. And the ambiguity of why they're feeling what they're feeling and what they're feeling in the moment and why that, how that drives their behavior, all of that's good. My frustration, I think, just comes down to it not being obvious just based on what's happening on the screen. Like, what just happened? <laughs> the details matter and we are denied them and that pisses me off. Anyway, I guess I'll talk more about that. Uh, with Mike in watching 100 movies when we record for that. But in the meantime, that's what I'm thinking about. So I'll, um, I hope that you guys, uh, you know, have a good weekend. Tomorrow, of course, I'll be continuing my rewatch of Legend of Korra uh, with season two, episode three, Civil Wars part one. And in the meantime, so I'll talk to you tomorrow for five more minutes.